is God sovereign and within what context is he sovereign? Therefore, is he micromanaging every part of your life and every part is already ordained, which is what sort of hyper Calvinists would believe? Or is he operating within our lives within the context of the choices we make? Now, I believe that God ultimately is transcendent and imminent. Therefore, he is in time and outside of time. And within the outside of time perspective, everything is now. So in that sense, there isn't a plan for the future or the past. It's now. So from that perspective, it's all now from God. Therefore, God is transcendent. But God is also imminent and he chooses to live within every moment of our lives. And that's why he could be surprised or not know everything, because he's living within that moment and the other moments haven't happened yet. Now, within that context, you've got to look at, I believe, um, essentially the understanding that God is wanting to bring good into our lives and he wants us to be blessed. So God is desire is for our blessing. But that isn't a absolute plan in which every single thing involved in our lives is all planned out and mapped out. Because within that, God does not see anything outside of his kingdom and destiny for us. But that destiny is to do with our identity, not necessarily every detail of our life and every plan. You know, uh, Jeremiah, is it 29, 11? It says, you know, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans, you know, for good and not for harm, basically. So within that context, God wants us to be blessed. But if we choose to do things our own way, then sometimes that blessing um is not immediate and therefore he has to bring good out of the choices we make to bring about that blessing now i don't believe that includes necessarily every person that we meet everything we do the gender of our children all that things jobs and everything else as a plan but obviously if we're in a relationship with god in which we are su submitting everything and asking him for his guidance and wisdom and insight into the choices we make and we know his intent for us, he gives us a lot of leeway to choose to do things in the context of his desire for us. So in one sense, he if let's say his desire is that we would be married, have children and be blessed, then he gives us the leeway to choose that person. Now, obviously, there are occasions where we submit that to God and say, God, will you bring someone into my life that you know, that I will be able to marry, then you're asking him to be involved in the choices and the decisions you make. And therefore you're looking for the guidance and direction and wisdom and the signs of him working in that. So in my situation right now, you know, I got to a point where my previous marriage had ended, my wife left. I was, I guess, content with where that was. But God then spoke to me and said, you know, that's a rather selfish attitude. What about you blessing someone else or making someone else happy? So I thought, oh, I never really thought about it that way. So then God then encouraged me to reach out to find someone. So I reached out to find someone in the way I know how to do and sending a, a spiritual frequency out there, connecting with someone in the spirit realm. And then God then connected to a person who he then said to them, I don't want you to be alone for the rest of your life. And then we connected. Now, I believe God was in that because both of us had submitted and surrendered to what God wanted for us. And he brought us together. Now, there could have been somebody else, quite possibly. But actually, this was the person that I believe that in both of us praying and submitting our lives to God, that God brought us together. So you could say that God intended us to be together, but in the context of us asking him to guide and direct and be involved in the process, it's not that God is sitting back in the sky somewhere, in heaven somewhere, just observing and sort of winding up the clock and letting it play out. He's involved in everything. It's not just happenstance. If we are in relationship in which we're only seeking to do that which is in the heart of God, Jesus only did what he saw the father doing. So as in relationship, the father gives us a lot of insight into what he's doing and then gives us a lot of leeway in how we choose to outwork what he's doing and what his desires and intentions are within our lives and through our lives. So we're not limited into a set of only one way of doing something or we get it wrong 
God gives us a, a broad spectrum of being able to choose to do things creatively out of the own desires of our own heart aligned to his desires to see those things fulfilled. So I don't believe it can be just happenstance if we just choose to go through life without ever being in that relationship with God in which God's at work in our lives and we are engaged with him to find out what his desires are. When we're surrendered to his desires, we're much more likely to be aligned to his plan for us, which is to be blessed. And that is the key. God blessed Adam and Eve. So he empowered them to prosper and succeed. And then he gave them a mandate to be fruitful and to multiply and to increase. He didn't say how many children to have or how many children of this gender to have. He just told them to be fruitful and multiply, increase and to rule over the earth. So within that context, they were blessed and empowered. They weren't empowered to follow the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and independence, which is why he removed that empowerment so they could not engage the tree of life in their state of fallenness, so they couldn't live forever in that state. But of course, he wanted them to live forever in a relationship with him, so he made a, a way for them to come. Um, so God's always at work in us, always wanting to bring good into our lives because he's a good God. He loves us. Um, and as long as we're walking with him, just keep walking one step at a time, one step at a time, then you will find that our lives will outwork in that state of blessing. And we won't necessarily need to be involved in every detail. And sometimes it's like jobs. Well, any job might be a, a, a OK job. What sort of job would you like? But there may be some jobs in which there's a purpose that God has within that job for us that actually one job might be the best job for us. But if we didn't choose that job, then God would still work about things for good in the job we did choose. So it's never a fait accompli. Oh, you've made a wrong decision. Tough luck. You're going to have to suffer now. God will always want to bring good out of the choices we make. But there are choices which are more guided by him. And there are choices which we make independently of him. And then we've got to see the good worked out in those choices. So the better thing is to walk with him in relationship and see those things at work. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.